Before I get started, you may have noticed that this bracket is different from the one that I made. I just really wasn't happy with the look of the old one and also this tachometer here was kind of just like in the middle of nowhere so I wanted to integrate everything all into a single panel. So I made this. This was kind of like a square foot of some, um, honestly I don't even remember how thick it was but it was basically just thin enough for me to bend it. I had it on a vise and I clamped it down with a piece of wood that way the bend was all uniform. It's solid enough for it to kind of just stay there and it's really nice and clean. So I have my cylinder head temperature here. I also have this voltmeter that doubles as the USB charges and stuff. This is of course the uh, temp and pressure and the tachometer there. So this is what it looks like with it started. It was like raw metal and um, after I bent everything up and uh, drilled the holes for the gauges, I painted it and waited like a day for it to kind of cure. But basically I wanted it to kind of just disappear and that's why I painted it black. So it kind of matches like this radio bezel and the gauges and the uh, dashboard. So yeah, it's kind of hidden, not really, uh, doesn't really stand out too much. Yeah, that's the update on that. Now, as far as the wiring for that, I did finally clean that up. I had the harnessing going here and it was kind of visible from looking right here, but now I actually have it going above this glove box thing and then going through the side like I mentioned before. And then over to the back where it goes under this rear seat and then through those holes that I drilled through and into the engine. So now I actually have that fully functioning and everything is working. So I'm gonna get the engine started so you can see that. And this is a cold start. So I haven't started it yet today, so we'll see how it goes. Oh, I didn't even have the ignition on, oops. Yep. I guess it starts right up, but yeah, all my gauges are working. You see the cylinder head temps. Uh, it was at 69 degrees. Now it's starting to climb up my voltage there. I have my pressure and the oil temp there and then the gauges for the uh, tachometer. But yeah, you can see also I have it wired up to the lights to kind of dim. I think only this one dims. Everything else just kind of stays the same, but this light turns on when I turn the headlight on. And of course you can't see that because yeah, it's daytime, but yeah, see, you can see the, the voltage actually jumping down, um, 12.3, and then it goes down to uh, 11.9, maybe kind of low actually, but while I'm driving, it, it charges it pretty well. I do want to look into upgrading eventually into an alternator, but I think for now, I think my generator just works out okay. So I'm gonna keep that for as long as I can, I guess, run it. Anyways, now on to the break-in period, and I've just driven 202 miles. I mean, I guess technically it should be a little bit less because my tires are smaller and they're spinning faster and yeah, whatever. There's like an actual formula to uh, really get the true mileage that I have, but whatever. I'm just going to go off of my odometer. Anyways, now I'm at 202 miles, so I'm going to start doing some uh, break-in maintenance. I do need to change the oil kind of just uh, freshen up everything else and I'll show you what I have planned on installing today. All right, here's the game plan. And I would normally use SAE 30 for a normal oil change. This time, since I still have a little bit of extra break in oil, I think I'm gonna use that again. I guess maybe go another 200 miles and then change it to SAE 30. But I kind of just, I don't have any other use for this. So I might as well just kill that. I have some new paper gaskets for the oil filter or the oil screen or whatever. I do have an extra one, but I think that one is going to be in good condition. So all I need to replace is this one. I want to replace the gasket that I made for the exhaust as well as replace the clamps because the clamps that I have, they're missing like this inside donut thing right here. And I can't seem to find a place that sells just that. So I just bought two new ones. Might as well replace that. And the thing that I'm pretty excited about is replacing my distributor finally with a vacuum advance. This here is a Petronix flamethrower. I think they say it's um, SVDA, which means uh, single vacuum dual advance. So I think this basically has the same mechanical advance as my 009, but it also has a vacuum advance. I do have to install this tube onto this vacuum thing here and put it onto my carburetor. But the thing is, I don't know if this is gonna be long enough because this needs to plug in like 
over there and it somehow needs to reach all the way over here. So it kind of depends where that little vacuum thing is gonna be. Hopefully it's gonna be here so that, where did it just go? Did I just drop it somewhere? Hmm. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, this is right here. Okay, yeah, if it could be like right here, then maybe, maybe it'll reach. have this pan ready so I'm gonna take off the center one first let that drain out a bit once it's mostly out I'm gonna take off these six ten millimeters and then that should remove this whole plate that was actually surprisingly loose doesn't seem to be too bad. It is kind of dark, but I think that's okay. I don't know. And then the drain plug has a little bit of tiny, tiny bit of like shaving, but I think that is normal. I'm not sure. Hopefully. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna let that drain and I'll get back to you. Okay, the dripping has gone down to a minimum, so I'm gonna start removing the remaining six nuts. And these should be very low torque. I think it's supposed to be only like five foot pounds. Okay, there's supposed to be these crush washers on each of these six bolts. And uh, I think the, the, the guy who built my bottom end, he used some Permatex, so now those crush washers are stuck. The new kit comes with a replacement anyways, so even if these fall into the pan, I don't really care. So I'm gonna try to pry this out slowly. And yeah, he definitely used some Permatex, so it's kind of hard to pull out. Just gotta pry this gently. I don't know if you can hear all those sirens in the background, but it sounds like a war zone. Yep, that's Los Angeles for you guys. Sirens every day. Maybe I should put some Permatex on when I replace this. It wasn't leaking too bad. Dang, those sirens are going crazy. It's like, they're right here. Anyways, gotta pull this out. It's not really dripping too much anymore. And yeah, it is kind of just gunky because of all the Permatex that they used. There we go. All right, that's the screen there. I think this is, oh yeah, this is just Teflon that I use for the drain bolt. But I don't really see any shards of metal in here. Yeah, it looks pretty good to me. This actually looks way better than the first time I drained out my break-in oil in the past. Okay, I'm just gonna take this to the bench. I'm gonna take off, actually, this should separate from this plate. And in between that is one of those paper gaskets. And the other one is right here there you go it's just really stuck because of all the permatex but okay i'm gonna clean everything up and um i'll be right back okay guys i got kind of frustrated taking off this gasket here because of all the permatex that the guy used it's not really worth my time trying to save this when i have an extra one so i have this one all cleaned up and i'm just gonna use the extra one that i have which is whoa almost dropped my phone i'm gonna be using this other one here so it's gonna be a brand new one and then these paper gaskets and the new crush seals and guess what i'm gonna do i am gonna be using some permatex just like the last guys i have some original engine degreaser here so i'm gonna just spray this until it's nice and clean continue to inspect it for anything that shouldn't be in there and once everything's all nice and clean I'm just going to reassemble everything and um, fill the engine back up with oil. I have the bottom of the engine cleaned up. And uh, to be honest, I'm kind of hesitant on using this Permatex. I can't 100% verify if they actually did use Permatex before. So I kind of went on the internet and I saw a few people use just like some standard grease or some people just didn't even use anything at all. So I don't know. 
I'm kind of worried that if I use Permatex, it's going to be really hard for me to take this off. So I think I'm going to maybe experiment. I'll try this grease on both sides of both gaskets. And I'm going to be draining this oil again in another 200 miles. So even if it did leak a little bit, it's not the biggest deal. All right, I'm going to make my gasket and bearing grease sandwich. And of course, when I open this, I bent the gaskets. So hopefully that's not a big deal. If it is, whatever. I think I'm supposed to just put like a really thin coat of grease. There's my sandwich. So I'm gonna put this into the block and uh, tighten everything down. All right, I have this big center bolt with the crush washer and I put some Teflon tape right in there. So I'm gonna torque that down once I have everything up. Oh man, I'm making this harder than it has to be. Don't wanna force that because I don't wanna rip the gasket. Okay, so the new crush washers go first and then the nut. Make sure I don't drop it because I still have the oil pan underneath. Okay, that's threaded. Ah, this is like really difficult with gloves on. Or it would be better if I had the right size glove, but you know. Okay. Everything's installed, now I'm just gonna torque everything down. Again, these six here really only require like five foot pounds. The center one here, just as long as it's nice and snug, I don't know the actual value, but yeah, as long as it's nice and tight, it shouldn't leak, hopefully. Oil is now all topped off, and I'm gonna run the engine just so I have some oil circulating the entire engine. Oil change is done. Looks like I'm not leaking anything yet. <laughs> so next up is the exhaust. So I'm gonna be replacing this exhaust gasket because when I got this, I didn't have a gasket for it. And uh, I actually ended up using one of those gasket paper things that you cut yourself. And I'm not really satisfied with it. So I'm gonna use the actual gasket there. And the other thing are these clamps here and on the other side. And when I reassembled this, I was missing, like I mentioned, those little donut things inside those clamps. So right now it's kind of just blowing back here a lot. And it's the same thing on the other side. And I'm pretty sure that's because I don't have these little inside things there. So the exhaust is gonna come out, then the headers are gonna need to come off also. One thing to note that eventually I feel like I should remove are these things, these wraps because uh, the first one I noticed was when I was installing this, it kind of chopped off a little bit right here. And also because this exhaust and headers hangs out a lot lower than the factory exhaust, I see that I'm pretty much scraping right here. And this kind of sucks because I spent so much time on doing this wrap and it's kind of just ripping to shreds. And what I'm worried is that if this continues to get worse and worse eventually i'm thinking maybe it's gonna unravel and maybe i'm gonna start dragging it so right now it doesn't look too bad but who knows down the line you know so maybe i might just remove it again yeah kind of sucks ah i spent like a whole day on doing this multiple days actually so yep i'm gonna remove the headers exhaust remove all of these and put the gaskets in this is so weird check this out so the gasket that I used was one of those paper gaskets, like I mentioned, where you just cut yourself. And I took this out and it's not even there. And I could have sworn I put it in there. So I wonder if somehow it fell off or burnt off. I have no idea, but I'm 100% sure I put a gasket there. But whatever, at least I have this new one to replace it with. I just want to quickly give another shout out to my buddy Rafa. He's the one that got me this trimill muffler and uh, he's been really following the builds. Notchback Rafa on Instagram. Check him out, guys. He's got a lot of Type 3 stuff going on.
here is the underside of the headers. You can see there, I kind of scraped and tore that up here when I was installing the engine. But here is the most damage. You can see it's just starting to really split. And once that starts to unravel, who knows how long this is gonna last. So I'm gonna take all this off and just reinstall everything back in. Dang, dude, <laughs> this looks hideous. So I wanted to pull out all of these wraps, like basically unravel it, but it was just producing way too much like powder and I really wasn't trying to breathe that. So I just sliced all the way across and you can kind of see my scrapes all along here. It doesn't really matter. It sucks that the paint's kind of ugly now, but whatever. It's just going to be under the car anyway. So I'm going to toss this back in. All right, you can see the little donut there on the heat exchanger, and this is the old one. And you have to make sure you put the replacement, one of these, in first before the donut thing. And then the new clamp right here will go right over that. Here we go, guys. So I have the headers installed, the clamps are installed, and the muffler installed with the gasket there. And it actually doesn't look too bad. At least I painted it gray or silver or whatever color this is, and it kind of matches this one. I thought about removing this one and uh, I guess I'll probably just leave it there for memories or something. I don't know. Either way, you can't even see that. I guess these are kind of visible from the back, which is kind of cool. Also, these are silver, which is, uh, I guess, kind of better than the black ones that I had. So yeah, no complaints. Okay, I have the car back on the ground and technically with this break-in interval period thing, I'm supposed to do the valve lash adjustments, but I actually cheated and did that last night. I think it was around like 173 miles, give or take or something. And I felt like I just wanted to do the valve lash and I didn't record it. I just wanted to get it done. I should be good to just move forward with replacing the distributor. So I'm gonna do that and then time the engine again. I'm not really gonna record how I replace the distributor. I kind of just did that on the last video. So I'm just gonna put this in real quick and uh, hop right back in. This distributor clamp has been giving me a lot of grief as far as getting it adjusted properly. So my idea is to replace the bolt that was normally in here with the other bolt that I had from this clamp. So it's a little bit longer and I kind of double stack the nut here on the end. I have like this spacer thing. I could technically get away with getting a smaller one, but I mean, this is what I have. So that's just gonna do for now. And then I'm gonna put a washer here and then this last nut. My theory is that once this is installed and I have the distributor here, because these are sticking out a little bit further out, it should be easier for me to at least tighten this in the future. So hopefully this works. New distributor is installed and I have it somewhat timed to seven and a half degrees before top dead center. So this should start as is. I think it's not starting because the clamp is way too loose and every time I try to crank it the distributor goes out of time so I'm gonna tighten the clamp just a little bit enough for it to not move and I should be able to start it shortly I also want to note that my idea for the bolt clamp is working really well so I can finally put two wrenches on both sides and tighten it that way and I have to make sure that while I'm tightening that this light is on meaning that I'm timed at seven and a half degrees before top dead center Okay, that should be tight enough for it to not spin when I try to crank it. Hmm. Okay, I figured it out. I had the coils for cylinder three and four swap backwards, so it should start now. Let's see. Oh, it wants to start. What the heck, man? All right, let me triple check again. Okay, I got it to run and it's really rough. I'm just holding the, oh, yeah, I'm holding the gas pedal and I feel like if I let go, it's just gonna die. So I just want it to continue running until I'm able to go back there and readjust the distributor. But let's see if I let go of my foot, it's gonna die, hopefully it doesn't. Oh. 
yeah, the timing is just way off. Oh, it's like almost gonna die. Yeah, that died. Okay, let me play around with the timing and uh, see what we can do here. Wow, okay, so I did the static timing on 10 degrees before top dead center instead of seven degrees and it started right up. So it should be good right now. I think I'm, now I'm gonna do the, um, the vacuum advance. I'm gonna take off this hose and then I'm gonna do the dynamic testing with this test light. I think they say like anywhere between 28 to 32 degrees. So I'm gonna aim for 30 degrees. All right, one more start just for good measure. Pretty good, starts right up. So now I'm gonna start doing the dynamic testing and I think I'm gonna set it to 30 degrees before top dead center. At least that's what everybody says. So let's check that out. So I have my timing light here and here I have it set to 10 degrees. And you can see down there, let me see, let me zoom in. can adjust the advanced or yeah the advanced degree is here instead of watching it on the pulley and if you know type threes the pulleys don't really have degrees on them they just have notches for seven degrees seven and a half ten and twelve and there's no degrees for the thirty so I am gonna determine that using this dial and then turning the distributor until I see top dead center lined up here light worked out pretty well. I have it now timed to 30 degrees before top dead center with the vacuum or actually without the vacuum advance and now I have that plugged in. To be honest I'm not the best to explain how this works. I just kind of have a general idea but I mean the engine's running pretty well now. So I'm gonna tighten the distributor before it spins anymore and call it a day. I should go take this square back out for a drive, but the spare distributor I have here, I'm gonna go and put it inside my spare parts uh, briefcase. If you've been wondering what I use these for, that one I use for my spare battery charger thing. That one is for other like tools and whatever. And this one here is my spare parts container. So I'm gonna put this distributor in here with my extra ignition. This is my little starter thing that I can hook up to the starter motor, spare fuel filter, and an extra cap and rotor. So this is gonna go in here, and then I'm gonna take the square back out for a drive and maybe get some gas. Also, I didn't show what's on the other side. And I have extra oil, but I think this uh, briefcase is pretty cool. It just closes up like that. It's like an old school, period correct I think Samsonite let me see yep Samsonite Schwader Bros Inc Denver Colorado and I have this set here that my neighbor was throwing away all right let's go for a drive guys you can see my gauges here are fully functional cylinder head temps are still rising but they kind of normalize like around 220 give or take I've noticed also when I'm driving in the highway, it goes down to maybe like 202, 210, but on any given like idle, whatever, it kind of sticks to around 220. My voltage stays anywhere between 13 to 14, which is good. The pressure, the highest I've seen the pressure for the oil was 132, and it kind of fluctuates up and down, of course. And uh, I'm sorry, I meant the temperature. The temperature stays up to about 132 Fahrenheit, give or take and then the pressure kind of jumbles around um, anywhere between like 10 to I don't know 50 or 60 depending how fast I'm going or like if I'm at a standstill at a parking lot or something um, after driving for a really long time the lowest I've seen it gone is probably around five um, when it was like really really hot and that's the point in which the light on this dash turns on or actually there for the pressure but any higher than that, the light kind of stays out. So as long as you're anywhere higher than five, 
PSI, then you should be good. And my tachometer is there, so. Yep, let's go for a drive. Just making a quick U-turn here, but let's see the acceleration real quick. Not bad, not bad. driving really nice now. Yeah, everything seems to be running pretty smooth. Let's go this way. I made it to the gas station and the car drove really well. The engine's running really smooth. I think the timing is way better than before. I think just something to do with like the the single vacuum double advance or whatever it's called, SVDA. It has to have something to do with that because all I really changed was just the oil and the gaskets on the exhaust. But now the engine's running so smooth, unless maybe my timing was off before. I don't know, whatever. But I'm happy with what I currently have now. And I think this is going to be the end of this video. So catch you on the next one, guys.